It was a gut thing. Yeah, it was a gut thing. It it, as, as a I was telling you earlier, the water got stuck in the driveway in the snow, slid off, and many people have done it since. As we stood around in the snow, waiting for the farm to come up to the tractor and pull him out, Betsy said to me, and we hadn't been up here, so she said, this is it, this is the one I want. <laughs> Well, Walter was very good <laughs> in those days. He called us up in New York. He'd been taking us around for a year. He called us up in New York. I remember it very well. And I had the topo map. And he said, I've got, your, I've got your house. It's six miles from Peterborough, six miles from Caffrey, and four miles from Dublin, at the end of a dirt road. So I got out the topo map, and I, did this, and I found a black dot, and I said, that's it. And it was. And we wanted the privacy, and it, you know, it had everything we we wanted. Uh, so the minute we got to Lincoln, she called up Walter and said, "We'll take it at the asking price." <laughs> so well, you see, you can see where the where the momentum is coming from. <laughs> this was the first piece because it had. We had intended it to be part of the LCIP, but the state had to sur uh, survey all these proposals, and we wanted to hold out two potential, um, very small pieces of land for future development, uh, both of them on roads where it wouldn't have hurt the main idea, which is to protect the streams. The LCIP wanted to protect Mud Pond, which is downstream from us, Stanley Brook, which runs through this property, all the way from Thorndike Pond to Mud Pond, and then on to um, the McDowell Reservoir, eventually. Uh, that, the purpose of the first conservation easement we did was to protect that watershed, Stanley Brook watershed. And but the uh, state didn't like the idea that we wanted to reserve two small bits of land, so they wouldn't allow it. So this piece, this project, like others that we have done, was just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And well, if you're going to sing this song, you might as well get up there and do it yourself. So, yeah. So we did. The other interesting thing is that the new conservation easements are both in Chaffrey. Uh, and they abut Forest Society Preserved Lane, the, the, the Blaine Forest that, uh, that the Forest Society Preserved. So you've got, besides the 350 or 400 acres there, you've got a big hunk yeah, of Forest a, Society land that's preserved, it, and it another, runs almost side. the whole way between Frost Pond and Thorndike Pond. So it, it, was, it made a nice big area. The, Amassing of adjacent parcels to have a bigger area was definitely part of our thinking uh, as we went along. So there's an awful lot of land just sitting around owned by people who really wanted to protect that land from future development for good and sufficient reason. And it was all good land because the towns had all had to vote to what land to protect. So there it was, and there was Nobody who was there to do the work to protect the land. The Forest Society was doing a wonderful job, but they weren't interested in these smaller pieces at the time. So we formed a board, we made ourselves a non-profit, and we got going. Very, very nice farmer, in, uh, uh, Wendy Rowe in Peterborough, has taken for years now, taken the hay off this field and field between the house and the barn and the dam field. And that pleases me greatly to know that the field is being productive and somebody's using it. He makes marshmallows <laughs> and uh, sometimes a lot. Last year it wasn't good particularly at all the weather. But this year with all the rain we had, 
it ought to have been really good. Yeah. And maybe he'll get a second cutting. It's coming back nicely. He fertilizes it. This mill site is where Samuel Chamberlain built a mill in sometime in the 1760s. The first record of it is when it was taxed down the tax rolls in 1768. And it was first a grist mill and probably thereafter a sawmill for making boards. And it survived right into the middle of the 19th century doing of various kinds of woodworking, uh, including a man called Samuel Whitney Hale, who subsequently became governor. And he got his start right here making shoe pegs with the water power that was heard. So we've met the McIntyres and gotten to know them somewhat, and we think that they are just the sort of people who should be here. Well, uh, Nina and I have been coming up here for a number of years. We like this close proximity to Boston, where we have been living for the last 25 years. Um, and we love the beauty of the region and a lot of what it has to offer. There's so many different aspects to the region. We enjoy the uh, mountains. We enjoy, there's a, there's a farming community. There's a strong arts community. There's a great collection of people in the region. Well, we love the, the meadows and the pastures and the, the views of the mountain. We really enjoy swimming in the larger pond. Uh, we're excited about the mill site as well, the history of the mill, uh, the fact that it was one of the first mills in the region is, is really interesting to us. But I love where Stanley Brook goes by that mill site and there's some really wonderful steep walls and the water goes so fast. I'm very fond of the, of the fields and the, and the meadows and the views of the mountain. I love the fact that there's a lot of water on the property. We have two nice small ponds, uh, one of which we swim in. It's barely deep enough to swim, but we do swim in it. We're really excited about welcoming people. Um, I think it'll be wonderful to have some of these trails be used more actively with people hiking or cross-country skiing. Potentially ed educational uses could, could be of interest, especially related to farming and agriculture. We're excited about some of those ideas too. But the thing that's interesting uh, about buying a property with an easement on it is that it reinforces the fact that this land will be here after we're gone. And there's something quite attractive knowing that we will be gone, hopefully our kids will take it over, you know, if that's the right thing for them at the time. But it's nice knowing that the property will remain as it is uh, with, you know, changes probably either through forestry activities or farming activities, but essentially be preserved like, th like it is for the long term. When we first saw the property, we didn't realize the extent of it. We assumed it was, you know, the fields and maybe the house. We didn't realize it was a 520 acre parcel. I don't think that we ever imagined that we would be in a position of, of acquiring such a large property in such a beautiful area with views and the like. And uh, it was only when we realized that with the, the easement in place, it became a, a property that was you know in our price range was became more affordable not only did it make it achievable for us to have this kind of property but it also made it ap appealing because we knew it would be conserved for the long term so it made the property feel special and it's also part of a community of properties by being part of the Monadnock Conservancy. So one of the things that's um, particularly attractive about Stonewall is we have two houses here. One house where Nina and I can live and, and retire to, uh, but we also have a small cottage and I've envisioned the possibility of um, bringing a young farmer or farming family uh, onto, the, onto the land so we could work um, in some kind of cooperative fashion where Nina and I can bring the capital to the transaction, if you will, i.e. the land and maybe uh, some resources, 
and a young farmer can bring passion and uh, energy and uh, knowledge. We are excited about um, our new pigs this summer. We've found um, three young pigs. They're Chester Whites, really cute baby pigs. And we'll be raising the pigs this summer and, and in the fall. And we're not quite ready to try silvo pasturing just yet with the pigs. So we're gonna bring the acorns to the pigs. But in the future, we might bring the pigs to the acorns to try some, some silvo pasturing. Uh, we'd also like to rotate the pigs um, pretty intensively um, in the pasture so, to do some pasture restoration so that the uh, pigs and then eventually sheep would start to break up the soil a little bit more, improve the quality of the soil. So just a small number of animals, but run in a way that um, they intensively um, work the soil. So we're excited to, to try that. So this year, some pigs, maybe in the future, some sheep. I know from some work I've done in Massachusetts in conservation, that the Northern Appalachian core that runs right through this region will be very important for migratory species to sustain um, the climate change that we expect to experience. So I think the region's really critical for as a crossroads for the forest. And I do think that with climate change, we're gonna need to produce more local food and we're gonna need um, places for habitat to withstand um, all the changes that we can't anticipate right now.